93.37, 92.1, WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, streaming audio and soon to be video with that on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's back with us. Hey, Scott, good morning. Good morning. Sir. Thank you for joining us today. And, of course, Brian Johnson, thank you for joining us Good from morning, the Fulton Tom. County Community Foundation. Well, hey, we appreciate you sending the sun out for us glad for to the do radio it. show. I know I'm that doesn't translate do that. on radio, but it looks nice <laughs> out the window here on 8th Street. It does. So. We've got a lot of things going on at the foundation. Um, of course, the Women's Giving Circle, that is a group that um, formed... 2011. Um, the one thing that they do every year is they have an annual social to award some grants. So that is coming up on Thursday, May 10th. Okay. This year we're going to have it at Jaretti's in the Arlington Room. Um, unfortunately, we're not qualified to be in that group. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the they do a lot of good things. They do a lot of good things since that group formed. They've already granted out over thirty nine thousand dollars to wow. area needs and projects. It's really neat to see how that happens. So, um, again, May tenth is the social. Um, if there are women that are part of that group that haven't, let me know if they're coming. Um, I'd encourage you to do that. Our RSVP deadline is May 3rd. If you're curious about the group and would like to come to that social, we'd love to have you join us just to find out what the group is about, see how things go on, um, see how the grants are awarded. Um, we'll have some entertainment that evening as well. Um, with that group, what happens is the annual dues are $120. Half of that goes to make community grants. The other half is put in an endowment fund. Um, that endowment fund in those um, seven years the group has been active it has already grown to over $45,000 and is starting to make um, some significant grants out of that. Um, this year, the group will actually have $6,500 to grant out to four Good. different projects. So you think about that, Brian. That's just $10 a month. It is $10 a month. It's, it's pretty affordable. That's part of, really, that's the model of the Community right. Foundation so that you and I can combine our gift with other people and make a big impact in our community. Um, so you think about this, the members have paid $120 and the group as a whole is awarding is awarding $6,500. So um, that small gift um, can make a big impact in sure our can. community. So it's really wonderful to see that. It's a fun group to be around, um, fun to see what kind of projects are going on with that as well. So again, the RSVP deadline is May 3rd. Um, if somebody wants to attend that or if they just want more information, um, give us a holler. 224-3223. Um, we have a page on our website, nicf.org. Um, under the Fulton County page, you'll see a Women's Giving Circle page. There's information um, about the group on there that women can check out. Um, and I encourage you, come come find out what the group is about. It's a, it's a good group of women um, doing good things in our community. So Excellent. Something else that's coming up, another deadline, Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund. Um, this is a fund that was also started in 2011, makes grants in the Kiwana and Union Township area. Um, the grant application is available on our website. That deadline is May 7th. Um, and that fund has up to $2,500 available to grant. Okay. So that could be all to one project. That could be to multiple projects. Um, the idea is that it goes to organizations serving Kiwana and Union Township. So examples of the past, things like the library, um, the fall festival, the VFW, the park, um, things like that have been supported through this fund. Um, so if you have a project or an organization in Kiwana that is needing some funding, I'd encourage you to check that out. That application is also available on our website, nicf.org. Um, check that out. May 7th is the deadline, so there's a little bit of time to be able to um, do that yet, but um, that grant, that fund was started by a local group of folks that um, said, hey, we would like to have something that's, that's specifically for our community, um, and that fund has been very successful and growing and, and thank you to all the donors who made that possible. So kind of exciting to see those two groups um, start and, and as the foundation grows we get more and more funds like this that, that support specific things within our community. So um, exciting time. So well today I wanted to continue our conversation. Of course 2018 is our 25th anniversary. 
So we're celebrating, doing some fun things. Um, and today I want to take us on a whirlwind tour of the <laughs> county parks. All right, let's do that. So it, it's kind of fun. And the, this is, I guess this would be the Reader's Digest version because <laughs> when I start looking at all the grants we've been able to make to support parks, um, it's a really long list of things that have happened. So um, this is this is the Reader's Digest version of this. So we're actually going to take start off our trip out in Leiter's Ford area, um, the Abenabi Landing. That's a park that's been around for about 10 years. Um, it's right, if you're not familiar with that, if you end up at the stop sign in Leiter's Ford and you head out of town kind of towards DeLong along um, Olson Road there, about a mile down the road, there's Abbey Landing, a really wonderful park right on the Tippecanoe River. Okay. There is a boat launch there that the Fulton County Parks Department actually maintains that park. Um, the land was donated to them. They actually have local residents that maintain that park, mow it, um, keep up the landscaping, and they've been working on that a lot lately. It's very used. Um, when we went out there for a site visit um, to actually present the grant award, I was talking to Bill Walsh, and he said it's not uncommon in the summertime for them to have 30 or 40 cars parked wow. in that park. And at that point, there really wasn't space for maybe five or six cars in that area. So in 2017, we um, awarded them a grant of $5,000 to help um, add some parking spaces. So if you've been out there recently or if you've seen on Facebook the Fulton County Parks page, they've added um, some gravel parking spaces so that folks can park there. Um, they also had an old building that was really not usable but they've been able to turn that into a pavilion, add some picnic tables, so you have a gathering space there right at the park. So it's been fun to see the renovations that have happened there and turn it into a more functional facility where it was kind of, it was a nice area, but some of the needs that they had weren't being addressed. And so they've been able to address these. And, and now folks that are floating the river or launching a boat or just want to have a picnic lunch, have a nice place to do that in the Abbey Landing Park. So from there, we're going to travel down to Germany Bridge Park. Um, 2011, we provided a grant to help them upgrade some of the facilities there. They ha now have a meeting space that um, groups can come in and use and um, be able to um, hold meetings there okay. or retreats. Um, and again, they also have a boat launch there. I personally have taken a couple of boys and fished <laughs> off the off of the banks there. Um, just a wonderful space right there by Germany Bridge. So. And then from there, we're going to head into Prairie Edge Park. That's one of my favorite places in the county. Um, just a really wonderful outdoor space. They've done a good job of wildflower gardens. Um, speaking of Women's Giving Circle, last year the Giving Circle granted to help provide some outdoor class space. So there's okay. a new deck out there and they're working on a boardwalk and um, working in partnership with the schools um, to be able to help actually have an outdoor classroom for kids um, at Riddle Elementary School. And it's I'm looking forward to being able to use that. Um, in 2008, the foundation actually provided a grant um, to help them construct a handicap accessible platform on the edge of the pond out there. So somebody that um, may have mobility mm -hmm. restrictions can get out and actually sit on the edge of the the pond if they want to fish or they just want to see what's going on it's it's really a neat addition to that park um, for folks out there so from prairie edge we're going to head down to grass creek it's been, okay. been a little while since we've been there um, they've got a number of things um, right in downtown grass creek they have um, a depot we've provided a few um, grants for that anywhere from actually the relocation to the park um, from where the depot was originally located to um, some floor installation, restoration. Um, they also were able in 2003 to construct a shelter there that they can use for picnics. 
Um, and then last year, 2017, it's, it's used so much. I, I was down there last fall, and they said, we have anything from people coming with our lunch and sitting here and eating to <laughs> weddings in this pavilion. And so it's been been wonderful to see that. But they said, you know what, we need some more seating. Sure. It's used so much, so we sure. were able to help them buy some new picnic benches for that facility. So um, wonderful to see how that park is being used in the Grass Creek area. So well, we're going to head back to Kiwana. Okay. If you've been to the Fall Festival or you've been through Kiwana, um, you've probably seen the park that they have right in downtown Kiwana. Um, that was actually constructed in 1998, um, partnership between Union Township and the Lake Bruce Lions Club and, and a number of community organizations help provide that. And it's really a wonderful park. They have some really neat facilities, very well kept up. Um, and so that was one of actually one of the early projects that Lilly Endowment helped provide some funding for um, and do some fairly major renovations to that park. I know in the past couple of years, they've added some amenities, things like um, a splash pad. Um, I know that they've been working and um, Charles Root at the library has been working to put together a a little league group again this year and okay. so they got that up and going so um, that park is just kind of a wonderful example of what a community can do and um, really nice really nice facility so and then from there we're going to head back to um, Liberty Township so downtown Fulton um, they've done a number of things um, they've had things like in 2000 they constructed a pavilion at the park um, a really nice shelter. They've done a number of things in their play area. Um, 2004, we provided a grant to provide um, new sidewalks and make the facilities there handicap accessible. Um, things like park surveillance cameras so that mm -hmm. they can keep the stuff nice that they have. Um, and then this last year, we were able to grant them um, funds to help them resurface their basketball courts. Um, I don't know that there's many times that I've been down to that park where there's not somebody playing on the basketball courts <laughs> out there. Of course, during the Fulton Fun Days, they have three-on-three -three tournaments, and um, we were able to go down there last, um, last well, it was early spring, okay. look at that, and it's it just needed some attention, and, and they knew it, and they just said, we don't really have funds for this. And we were able to help them resurface the entire area and it's really great now and um, a nice smooth surface that I, I no longer have flashbacks to playing <laughs> on a concrete parking pad with cracks all over it it's it's now a nice nice facility um, for the community and we'll, we'll serve them for many more years to come so from there we're gonna come over to rochester city okay um course manitow mountain it, it's fun to see how that was used i was just at the park this last weekend with a group of teenagers and we had a lot of fun just hanging out on manitow mountain it's hard to believe that that was constructed um 20 years ago mm -hmm. so in 96 and 97 we provided some funding for that um to help um really I don't know if you want to say set the standard for a community exactly. project, but there are sure. a lot of lot of people that were um, involved in that. A lot of volunteers, a lot of hard work, and and to sit here and say twenty years later, it's still being used. And I I wouldn't even venture to guess at how many cars were in the parking lot and kids playing on that and families just enjoying a nice evening at the park. So Manitow Mountain is one of those things that we've been excited to be a part of. And then just recently, last year, Centennial Park. Of course, we've had had the situation at the corner of 9th and Main. Yes, and exactly. what's going to happen with that. And, and the mayor and Terry Lee started spearheading the project to build this park. And a nice outdoor gathering space right in the middle of downtown that can be used for a number of things. Anywhere from going down and eating your lunch to sure. things I I enjoyed last year at the at the Blacktop Cruises and Chili Cook-Off um, spent some time down in that park just hanging out a wonderful space to kind of be with that festival right in downtown so so and then from there we're going to head over to akron um, akron's done a number of things of course talking about centennial park akron has um, akron's downtown community square um, right there on um, the main street going through right. 
Akron. Um, they do all kinds of things there, anywhere from um, community gatherings, just folks getting together, to I know the Art League has hosted a number of concerts in that area, just um, a number of community gathering spaces and, and really nice place to um, have something outdoors. Um, so in 2000, we provided some funding to help landscape that, um, and they've done a really good job with that park. Um, we're going to head over to Pike Memorial Park. Sure. Of course, that's downtown, down with the with the Ball Diamonds and Community Center, kind of a nice complex of, of a number of amenities there. Um, so in 97 and 2005, we helped provide some funding to help them construct basketball courts there. Um, in 2000, they submitted a request, and we were able to help fund um, a project to help them kind of develop a master plan for the park, look at what kind of amenities they had, what they needed, what they wanted, and how they could get there. Um, 2006, we were able to help um, provide funding for the hiking and biking trail that connects not only Pike Memorial Park, but Akron Community Center all the way down to Cutshaw Park. Um, on the south end of Akron and really run between the two. And then in 2017, we were able to provide a grant that helped um, plant some trees along the pathways there. So um, will be a nice covered area for future use when you're, when you're walking or biking on that. And then we're going to kind of end our tour at Cutshaw Park. Okay. It's always interesting to me um, when I talk to folks about Cutshaw Park if they're folks that have been residents in Akron for a while, the first response is usually, well, that's the town dump where we used to go shoot rats. <laughs> if you walked into that park now and somebody didn't tell you that, you'd have no idea. It's, it's really been a wonderful example of how to turn something that wasn't really that great for the community into a really neat um really neat facility for the community. So 2002 um, was the first grant that we provided to um, help support that project. And it really was to help develop a plan how to reclaim that site. Um, and so they worked on developing a plan saying, well, what could we really do with this? And so the first project that really happened that was visible in um, 2008 skate park was constructed um, there. There were a number of kids from the community that got together and said, hey, we could really use this. Um, they did a wonderful job of designing it and um, raising funds for it, so we were able to provide them with a grant um, for that. And then 2016, um, we had a help with a grant to help provide some concrete pads for the disc golf course. Um, they've done a really good job of incorporating the disc golf course and making it work with the lay of the land. Um, it really looks like it's meant to be there. Excellent. Um, and then 2017, there was a leadership academy group that said, well, you know, we have all these great things, but we don't have any place to sit down and meet or have a meal or right. if we have a disc golf tournament or some sort of outdoor activity, we don't have any place to meet. So they worked and were successful in being able to build a pavilion right at the, the entrance area of Cutshaw Park. So now... Um, if there's folks that are doing things in that area or just want to have a have a family picnic, um, there's space right there at Cutshaw Park to be able to do that. So it's it's wonderful to see how some of those ideas have turned into a a great facility for the Akron area. And um, I've enjoyed the park myself, and it's it's an example of how we can have a vision and say, hey, we want to do this. Let's start working towards it. How many so, parks is that? <laughs> I figured you'd probably have to go back and count them. Well, that's your... 10 that I've got on my list, okay. but we, we have more okay. than that. So we, we right. think about um, all of the little pocket parks that we have in the community. Exactly. Um, we didn't touch on all of those, but um, I think one thing that, that we see in community development is how what kind of amenities do you have? Sure. And sometimes it's just a, you know what, it's... Prairie Edge being able to go out and take a walk around a nice setting, maybe go fishing, maybe take your dog for a walk, enjoy a butterfly garden, learn something about nature there. Um, sometimes it's just it's as simple as that or taking a walk on a trail through a park exactly. with 
um, that's that's landscaped nicely yeah. all the way up to hey we want to plan an event and we've got this nice park that that we can be on or it's just going and hanging out with a bunch of kids at Manitow Mountain. People want to so, help you with the parks, Brian. How can they do that? Well, if folks have questions about anything that um, we talked about today, you can always um, give us a holler. Our phone is 224-3223. Um, visit us online, nicf.org. Um, look for us on Facebook okay. under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. Um, just a couple of reminders. Women's Giving Circle, May 10th social. If you could give me a call or shoot me an email by um, May 3rd to let me know that you're going to be able to attend. And also the Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund. Um, application deadline is May 7th. So have ideas for either of those projects. We'd love to talk to you or anything that you may have an idea. A lot of these park projects came from somebody saying hey i have an idea we think we can make this happen and so let's do it and they've done it so that's where a lot of the things that we have in our community come from so brian johnson as always thanks very much thanks for being here thanks for all the good work you guys do for the community well we we work with our donors and that's that's the reason why we can do it